Is this your king? A refutation of Dr. Ben. party people in the place to be i go by the name of the bk apologist transmitting all the way live new york is the city brooklyn is the borough what's good what's popping happy wednesday to everybody hope everybody's doing well uh i know our people in well i guess closer to my neck of the woods they're preparing for a huge winter storm so i hope everybody's bundled up got all their toilet paper and uh bread and, and firewood that they need to stay to stay warm and um yeah man we here and um this is a uh well actually before i get into that i gotta say what's up to the party people in the chat we got chris gibson on the check-in we got dr nose we got devin Payne. we got dfc in the building we got the incomparable the indelible nate 2d2 in the building what's going on nate and as always ladies and gentlemen if you haven't yet already done it Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please share this link to your perspective corners of the interwebs uh, so we have as many people as possible to see what's about to go down. And if you like what goes down in this channel, please feel free to give a little donation via PayPal. And if you'd like to be a monthly supporter of BK, you could become a patron where you get an assortment of goodies to enhance your personal Bible study. And, of course, I have one of the sharper tools in the UA shed rocking with me today. Of course, I'm talking about none other than MJ Jackson. What's going on, sir? What's good, my friend? What's good? Just here to continue your masterful series, Is This Your King? Yep. And as, as MJ said, I, I've begun a series called Is This Your King? Where we decided to... Um, you know, look at some of the, the pillars, the OGs, the people who are considered grand masters, right, of the conscious community. And we're going to give our critique to these individuals. Uh, the first one we did was Dr. Phil Valentine. But today, MJ, I feel like this one's going to hurt a little bit more for certain individuals because this individual is very near and dear to this community. But, um, this individual, you know, has one went out of his way to attack the gospel. And, you know, we defend the gospel, you know, and as as Christians and as apologists, we cast down imaginations. We defend the gospel wherever and however we can. So uh, the person that, of course, I'm talking about is um, Yosef Ben Yakinen, better known as Dr. Ben. Quote, unquote, doctor. Right, and we're going to get into that as well. But um, now, we, there is no animosity for this individual. Unless, unless otherwise shown to me, I will believe that he was very sincere in his efforts to uplift black people. Uh, of course, we believe that he went about it the wrong way. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Now, you, I, you can be sincere, right? I, I take a different position. No, you can be sincere and be wrong, yeah. I mean, why lie about your credentials? And of course, we're going to get to that. Like, right. There was some self serving going on, too. But, you know, for some people, they feel like, you know, it's for the better good. You know what I mean? So it's like, if I got to bend a few things here and there for the end result to be positive, then it's, 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 it's well worth whatever, I, whatever compromises I've made along the line. You know what I mean? So that's mm. that's what I mean by that. I don't think he was being malicious. I think that he was trying to be in in, in his mind. I'm sure he's trying to be very shrewd in how he maneuvered. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I don't think it's it was still wrong, but I don't think it was he was being malicious. I'm I'm trying to be as charitable as possible. You go ahead. I I believe he was a lying wonder. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, hey. <laughs> but 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 what I'm saying, I, I don't disagree. With, but what I'm saying is, I feel like he probably felt that that was a necessary evil. If it was going to get him in the spaces that that he got into, 
to try to encourage and and, and, you and, do, know, ther- and do therapy. Yeah. Right. Therapy. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. So, but as Michelle Turner says here, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. This is, these, these are facts. These are facts. So, with that being said, so but we're gonna we're gonna play a couple of clips. But before we get into the clips, we're gonna look at some you know some of these things that um, MJ has alluded to. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about his sources and his um, misplacement of sources as well. So we're gonna start with the Now Valley Civilization and spread of African culture by Joseph Ben Yakub. So this is something that he has said. Uh, MJ, could you read this, please? <clears throat> it was the Greeks like Plato, Aristotle, and others who came and learned. In those days, the students would come and read for their education. There were no books to take home. There were no publishing houses like now. You only had one book, and most of the subjects were taught orderly. Certain instructions were given toe to toe, Shoulder to shoulder, mouth to ear. I will go no further than that. Some of you here know how that was done and under what conditions. The English adopted it and called it Freemasonry. Sir Albert Churchward's book, Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man, is a cornerstone of Freemasonry. Churchward was a big man in England besides being a physician. He was also one of those who made English Freemasonry what it is today. And this comes from Nile, the Nile Valley Civilization and the spread of African culture. So by, if, if you didn't realize, that, that was um, his attempt at doing a Dr. Ben impersonation. So, And I think Dr. Ben was impersonating somebody, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so the, the person that he's referencing is Albert Churchward, right? Now, if you've been following the channel, we know a little bit about Mr. Churchward, right? Because uh, in Afrocentrism, Mythical Paths and Imagined Homes by Stephen Howell, he says, Albert Churchward's aim was to demonstrate that the secrets of Freemasonry descended directly in unbroken line from the wisdom of ancient Egypt. Egypt was the origin not only of civilization, but of a true or natural religion, of which all later faiths are offshoots and merely partial expressions. This, too, it's a notion which goes back to Giordano Bruno and Hermeticus. Now, and this is why he's referencing Churchward's work, because he believes, as Churchward believes, that his material is a direct descendant of actual uh, comedic belief. But that's not the case. You know, what Albert Churchward gets his material from is from the Corpus Hermeticum. And you know we've we've done a, quite a few videos on that, so I will not belabor the point, but I will say this: uh, this is from the origins of Jesus mysticism, confused esoteria, and Anglo polemic. Casabon careful analysis detected the clear style and usage of late antiquity in Corpus Hermeticum. He demonstrated that the texts originated in this period were likely written after the New Testament. And any proposed authorship in ancient, ancient Egypt was untenable. The Corpus Hermeticum was a product of the first few centuries AD without any connection to an ancient Egyptian sage. In other words, Corpus Hermeticum was a fraud. So Dr. Ben was very keen on using churchward but Mr. Churchward was very keen on using the Corpus Hermeticum, which we now know is a fraud. So unfortunately, Dr. Ben uses fraudulent material. <sighs> so, and this is just the, the beginning. Uh, before I continue, um, any any thoughts about what we just read, MJ? Scratch a lie, find a thief. All righty. <laughs> Now holding back tonight. Um, this is from We Can't Go Home Again, An Argument Against Afrocentrism by Clarence E. Walker. Both Yosef, Yosef A. A. Ben Yakinen and John Henry Clark have written extensively about the African origins of Western civilization and have labeled Cleopatra black. Uh, I always mess up the Roman. Is that six? Is that, is that the six um, 
MJ? Uh, no, no, that's, that's seven. seven. That's, that's seven? seven? Okay. Ben Yakinen, for example, incorrectly called Cleopatra's son Cleopatra the Eighth and compounds his error by writing this nonsense. Quote, Cleopatra the Eighth committed suicide after being discovered in a plot with Mark Antonio, Mark Antony, to murder Julius Caesar. This is a startling revisionist interpretation in light of the fact that Julius Caesar has been dead for 14 years when Cleopatra committed suicide. Now, this is, you know, a lot of this is just basic ancient history that a lot of us have had in school. You know, so this is a, 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 a glaring mistake on someone who's supposed to be a, a doctor in such things. Um, this is from Not Out of Africa, how Afrocentrism became an excuse to teach myth as history. It says here, after Dr. Ben Yocanan made these same assertions once again in his lecture, I asked him during the question period why he said that Aristotle had come to Egypt with Alexander and had stolen his philosophy from the Library of Alexandria when the library had only been built after his death. Dr. Ben Yakuman was unable to answer the question and said that he resented the tone of the inquiry. Uh, some of us have seen uh, the, the actual debate between him and um, Mary Lefkowitz, where he says, what's, what's the infamous thing he says? I I only now, debate you, you, you're thinking of Hen you're thinking of Henry Clark. Oh, that was Henry Clark. My bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My you're thinking, bad. Yeah, this dude right here, and I think there's more to it. He played the race card. Yeah. He flat uh Ben Yakin and flat out said that Mary Lefkowitz was racist just because she asked the question. He played the race card. Yeah. Scratch your life, find a thief. Crazy. All right, now this is from The Contested Legacy of Dr. Ben, a father of African studies by Sam Castlebaum, March 27th, 2015, the New York Times. Documents from Malcolm King College and Cornell show Mr. Ben Yakinen holding a doctorate from Cambridge University in England. Catalogs from Malcolm King College list him holding two masters from Cambridge. According to Fred Losey, a communications officer at Cambridge, however, the school has no record of his ever attending, let alone earning any degree. Similarly, the University of Puerto Rico, Maya West, which is funny, that, that's where my family comes from, Maya West, where he also said he had studied, has no records of his enrollment. So this idea of calling him doctor is just, you know, it's not true. It's just not true. He's not a doctor. He lied about having multiple degrees. We we know prosperity preachers who lie. At least they'll go get a fake degree. At least at least the prosperity pimps go get a fake degree. This is reverse prosperity pimping right here. He won't he don't even have a fake degree. Here's the thing. If you at least attended a school, they have some type of transcripts. Even if you made an F, right? You'll still have some type of record of having. Who lies about their credentials? Malcolm X didn't lie. He was self-educated. And the thing is, th this was a. Um, he really took a chance here because. It wouldn't be that hard to fact check his documentation. You know, so the fact that people just took it at face value, you know, says, says a lot about the people as well as him. You know, so, but yeah, he is not a doctor. Though he is known as Dr. Ben, he is not a doctor. Let me just say this too. If I offended anyone uh, doing the, um, the doing the voiceover, I'm sorry. I repent. Okay. Nevertheless, this dude is getting all of it today. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So with that, um, we're going to go into a couple of video clips. All right. Uh, okay. We're going to go to the two minute and seven mark. Mr. Mr. Jackson. Two minute, 207.
ever mentioned. And the first Jew is Abraham. You don't have a single, his mama wasn't a Jew. His daddy wasn't a Jew. They said Abraham was the first of the Jews. Your own Bible says it. So then anything about the beginning of the world must be something he thought of. Are you yeah, no concept there? of it. All right, so, right, ever mentioned, and the first Jew is Abraham. His mama wasn't a Jew. His daddy wasn't a Jew. They said Abraham was the first of the Jews. Your own Bible says it. Really? Well, let's see what our own Bible says about Abraham. Uh, MJ, if you could read that. Genesis 14, 13. The, then one who had escaped came uh, and told Abraham, the Hebrew, who was living by the Oaks of Mamre, the, Am the Amorite, both of Eschol and Anar. Right. So Abram, at this time, he's not Abraham. Abram is known as the Hebrew, not the Jew. But where do we get this concept of the term Jew? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we're going to look at Dr. Orit Arvinery, is a research fellow of the Kogod Research Center at Shalom Hartman Institute and a graduate of Hartman Briet Midrash for Israeli rabbis, where she received ordination in 2018. She is a lecturer in the Bible and the dean of students at Shalom College and holds both a BA and an MA from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. She received her PhD in Bible studies from Bel Elon University. So she is a well degreed individual. And she says, the name Yehuda, which appears in the Bible as the name of the fourth son of Leah, also became the name of the tribe of the descendants of Yehuda. In this form, it is mentioned numerous times in the Bible. The term Jew, Yehudi, on the other hand, does not appear in the earlier books of the Bible and is to be found only a few times in the latter books of the Bible. Second Kings, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Nehemiah, Esther, and Chronicles. The use of the name Yehuda expanded following the separation from the kingdom of Israel, not only to the name of the tribe, but also to the kingdom of Yehuda, which is the southern kingdom created from the portions of Yehuda, Benjamin, and Shimeon. The term Jew was not used as a collective name for the residents of the kingdom in its early stages. Other terms were used, in particular, men of, Ye men of Yehuda. Thus, for example, in Judges 15.10, quote, and the men of Yehuda said, where you where are you come up against us? So this term Jew comes much later on, not during the time of, of Abraham. But here we have Dr. Ben. It's in your Bible. He says it right there. He's a Jew. It literally doesn't say it. But I didn't need the, honestly, I didn't even have to show you all this. All I had to do was show you the scripture. Yeah, we I just did. read it and, and deduce it from scripture. Like Jew, Judah. So. Oh my God. It was that simple. <laughs> Sky, man, you're terrible today. Oh my goodness. Oh man. So. Um. All right. So with that, let's go to. I'll put the video back up. If you can go to. Let's see here. The three minute and 50 second mark. I'm going to start doing my time steps just like this. <laughs> Three minutes, 50 seconds. Yep. Bet. All right. Look at that face. She is, she's learning. <laughs> she's learning some things she's never learned before. What her pastor didn't teach her. Mm. All right. Morning. So at the council, at the council of Jamia, at the council of Jamia, the change exodus and replace it with Genesis, the same thing they did with Luke and Matthew. Luke was the first book in the Christian Bible, but it looks silly talking about to a woman a child would be born in the first book, and in the second book to a Are virgin a child would be born. Well, he loves the Council of Jamnia. <laughs> I'm telling you. So he says that at the Council of Jamnia, they changed Exodus and replaced it with Genesis. Interesting, right? 
So let's let's read a little bit about this particular council and <laughs> see if it coincides with Dr. Ben's claim. So we're going to look at this book called The Canon Debate, Lee Martin McDonald, James A. Sanders. Albert Sandberg recognizes that the Council of Jamea hypothesis is dead. At the same time, still connecting that the Hebrew tripartite canon was probably fixed around 70 and 135 uh, CE. He suggests that my own view of the hypothesis may have been too quickly accepted. He asks, what alternatives are there to Jamea as the venue? Lee McDonald surmises the case. There is evidence that a discussion was held at Jamea on the can canonical status of Ecclesiastes and the Song of Songs, not re Exodus replacing Genesis. But this is not enough to suggest that any binding or official decisions were made regarding the scope of the biblical canon at Jamea. So the two things here is, there's no proof that the canon was solidified at this council. But the, the one thing that was spoke about and contested was whether or not Song of Songs and Ecclesiastes should be part of the canon. It had nothing to do with Genesis and Exodus. Right? And this is from um, Mark Gizak, PhD. A German scholar, Henrik Greitz, introduced the idea in 1871 based on a tiny passage in the Mishnah. M. Yahadim 3, uh, I guess chapter 3, verse 5. Yadayim is the, one of the last sections of the sixth order of the Mishnah called Tarut. Since then, tons of scholars have repeated over and over and over that the exclusion of the literal canonical books relies on the Council of Jamir's decision. But very few scholars go back to Gret's work and take a look at M. Yah 3 5. I was curious, so I took a look. Guess what I found? Nothing. Exactly nothing. Uh, M. Yah 3 5 presents a few rabbis' arguments about whether Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs are canonical or not. That is, whether they, quote, render unclean the hands. If a book is canonical, then it, quote, renders unclean the hands. After a few arguments are presented, then votes are cast, and both books are considered canonical. That's it. There is no discussion of the literal canonical books. There is no definitive list of the canonical books. There is nothing that indicates they made more decisions. It only presents two sides of an argument over the canonicity of Song of Songs and Ecclesiastes. It has nothing to do with what Dr. Ben had to say. There was no canonization, and what they did talk about was whether Ecclesiastes or Song of Songs are canonical, not replacing one with the other. And at the end, they both decided that both Song of Songs and Ecclesiastes should be canonical. canonical. So, I mean, it, like, he's completely off here. Like, completely. You know, uh, MJ, your thoughts? Well, he was trying to clearly score style points with the very name Geomnia. Because this is not the type of stuff that you're going to hear talked about outside the seminary. Um, you know, if, if you're having a discussion, you know, even about the Old Testament canon, you might, you know, you might read up on uh, the Bishop Jerome and his dealings with the with the uh, with the Jews to see, you know, when he went to them, which books made the hands unclean. But the Council of Jamnia, I mean, that was strictly a Jewish thing for for them to hammer out whether or not Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, um, you know, was canonical. Now, if you want to have an argument about that, sure, but I don't think you would like to because that's not where the action is at. But I mean, once again, this is you know simply taking advantage of a people who have had a traumatic history and uh, seeking to enslave them to a pathetic ideology. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, therapeutic mythology. Yeah. Right. Uh, creating a, a black hegemony to go against a European hegemony. You know, it's like, it's basically, we, it's, we're going to fight white propaganda with black propaganda. 
You know, <laughs> Michelle's funny. So I'm going to the fact and be like the council of the bodega said words that that they tell you that at church. <laughs> Woke. <laughs> oh man, you guys are terrible. So, so now let's go back to the video. Um, all right, here we go. MJ, if you could start it at the five minute mark. Five minutes. That's what my coach used to say when, when we only had five minutes left in the weight room. <laughs> All right. Make it big. Had been scourging the earth. Rome, which had been raping anything female. Ro Rome, which had produced nothing but a scavenger nation that would go and take anything they could at the case of murder, was able to convince the early Christians, by the way, they had not taken on the name Christian until 212 mm. at the Council of Antioch. Antioch is the first time people start calling themselves Christians. Jesus is supposed to have been dead 212 years before the first Christian. Jesus himself was never a Christian. All right, you start there. can't be a follower of yourself. Oh, my God. Right. So, yeah, and he says you can't be a follower of yourself. Right. So why say it then? That makes no sense. That why did you say that? Mm. We all know Christ isn't a Christian. It's just that's like the dumbest rhetorical move that I've ever heard. But has hasn't it been repeated though, bro? Farrakhan has said it. They've all said Jesus it. wasn't a Baptist. He wasn't a Muslim either, brother. So, yeah, it, it's it's it's. But this is the Grand Master, mm -hmm. okay? Master Teacher. It's awful. So he says, the early Christians, by the way, they had not taken the name Christian to 212 at the Council of Antioch. It's the first time people start calling themselves Christians. All right, well, let's let's look into that, right? Um, this is from the Encyclopedia Britannica about Antioch, the Synods of Antioch. Beginning with three synods convened between 264 and 269, in the matter of Paul of Samosta, more than 30 councils were held in Antioch in ancient times. Most of these dealt with phases of the Arian and of the Christological controversies. The most celebrated took place in the summer of 341 at the dedication of the Golden Basilia and is therefore called in Canilius and Dedicatum. Nearly 800 bishops were present, all from the Orient, but the Bishop of Rome was not represented the Emperor Constantinus attended in person. All right? So he got the dates wrong. And there was more than 30 councils. And the majority of the councils had to deal with the Christological controversies with Arius. Now, if you look at what I cited, this is the 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica. I purposely chose that because this is something he would have had. This is not some newfangled, updated data that, that, that he could get his hands on. This is a 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica. <sighs> he could have known this, but let's continue. Uh, the council ap approved three creeds, whether or not, whether or not the so-called four formula is to be ascribed to the continuation of this synod or to a subsequent but distinct assembly of the same year. Its aim is like that, the first three, while repudiating certain Aryan formulas, it avoids the, the Athenian uh, homoousios, that somewhat colorless compromise doubtless proceeded from the party of Eusebius of Nicomedia. It proved not unacceptable to the more nearly orthodox members of the Synod. 25 canons adopted regulate the so-called metropolitan constitution of the church. Right, ecclesiastical powers vested chiefly in the metropolitan, later called archbishop, and the semi annual provincial synod, which he summons and over which he presides. Consequently, the powers of county, of country bishops, are curtailed and direct recourse to the emperor is forbidden. The sentence of one ju ju judiciary is to be re respected by other ju 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 blah, judiciaries of equal rank. Retrial may take place only before the authority to whom appeal regularly lies. Uh, 
without due invitation, a bishop may not ordain or in any way other way interfere with affairs lying outside his proper territory, nor may he appoint his own successor. Penalties are set on the refusal to celebrate Easter in accordance with the King Creed decree, as well as a as on leaving a church before the service of the Eucharist is completed. The numerous objections made by eminent scholars in past centuries to the description of these 25 canons to the Synod and in Canelius have been elaborately stated and probably refuted by Halefe. Uh, the canons form part of the Codex Caninum used at Chalcedon in 451 and passed over to later collections of East and West. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff that they voted on. Guess what they didn't vote on? Whether or not they should be called Christians. <laughs> that was not on the docket in any of these councils, people. It just was not. We know what was on the docket. We have it. Because these guys took corpious notes when they went to these councils. We know not only what they voted on, we actually know who these, who were there. And again, this is from a 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> yeah, Christians are not hiding any of this. It's, it's not, you know. So he had he he could have found this book easily in the library. Not a problem. <laughs> so so back to your statement earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Since he was, sin you know, since you believe he was sincere, was he just an idiot? No, I think, I think that what? Well, first of all, he did lie, but I think for him, it was justified if it was going to help the upliftment of, of black people. That, that's what I meant by him being sincere. I, I don't think he. He was being deceitful just for his own personal gain. I really believe that he thought that by doing this, he'll be able to get into certain circles of influence to actually help. Now, of course, as believers, that, that, you can't do that. You can't lie your way into helping other people. Like we are, you know, against that. But I believe that's probably what he was thinking. Unless, of course, you know, because I, I don't know the man unless that, there's more data it could be presented to me that he that he was just doing this just for his own personal gain. But I really believe that he loved black people. Do, do you and think I, that he knew this was a lie? I don't know. If he, I, I think he's he he was misinformed. I mean, he, he's he, he's reading stuff like Albert Churchward, you know, Gerald Massey. You know what I mean? So it's like there's a lot of misinformation. But I think it's a lot of stuff that he did just create because he thought that it made for a better story to to give black people some pride in who they are. I I hasten to say, and this is for any hoteps or any black conscious folks that are watch this video. But if we use the method that these uh, cranks, oh, these they, they, they would have dragged us. They would have dragged if, us. If, if if we try to use this historical method that these clowns are using, you can kiss reparations goodbye. Right. You can kiss it goodbye because you wouldn't be right. able to prove your birthday. I mean, in the in 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 the long run, doing this causes more harm than good for black and brown folk. You don't have to create this fantasy world with imaginary degrees so that you, you know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's a lot of concrete, amazing facts about black and brown folk. You don't have to make stuff up. You don't have to uh, try to disintegrate Christianity to uplift black people. You don't have to do that. The gospel actually empowers black people. It has, I mean, we, I mean, we've talked about that, I don't know how many times, like just the history of Africa and the Bible and all the great, you know, scholars and theologians, all the great things that the black church has done in the in America. You know, so it's like I don't there was no need for the propaganda. You know, because all you're doing is mimicking white supremacy when you do that. That's all you're doing. And you ain't That's getting no reparations doing. doing what you doing what you're doing. No, no. <laughs> 
No reparations. But again, you know, it, I I get it was almost like an act of desperation. It's like, we got to make black people feel good about being who they are. I'm like, but we have that vehicle. We have that mechanism. It's called the gospel. It's called the gospel. You know, realizing that you are, you know, the Imago Day. You are the Solemn of Yahweh. You are made in his image. You know, if we're going to awake to any identity, that's the one we have to awake to. You know, so again, I feel like Dr. Ben, in his, in his own way, was trying to benefit black people, but you hurt them more than you than anything else. You know what I mean? And again, you know, I just don't want, you know, I, I'm trying to be charitable because, I mean, we talk, we're speaking of the dead as well, you know. Mm. And I know a lot of people feel very strongly about this particular individual, but he was wrong. He was wrong. He was wrong not only in the information he disseminated, he was wrong in how he maneuvered to give you the information that he disseminated. He was wrong in both both ways. Let me let me put it in the young folk language. He was was, finessing y'all. It was all it was cap. It was all cap. (laughs) (laughs) It was all cap. He was finessing the hell out of y'all. Seriously. So, but yeah, I mean, this is your king. Imaginary degrees, not knowing history, like literally not knowing, like history that you would find in high school class. You know, definitely didn't know church history. Doesn't know his councils. Mm-mm. Don't know his dates. N- nor his Doesn't, dates. D- d- I mean, even if you don't take Luke to be true, I mean, it's just, it's it's a fact that Luke was written in the first century is a fact that Luke calls the followers of Jesus Christians. In in Luke X. Right. I think the worst one, though, is that Abraham is called a Jew. It says it in your Bible. All you had to do was read the page, the verse. to see. I that would have said, I, where? Right. That's it. But because he was so charismatic and so, you know, Mm, mm, forthright mm. in his delivery and, you know, and, you know, it's the itching ears. They were itching ears that wanted to be scratched and he was more than willing to scratch those ears. See, in in my opinion on that, I think, yeah, I mean, you probably had a whole bunch of them with itching ears. I think today we have a lot of itching ears. I think back then, these people were just victims. These people were victims. There's just no excuse today. You got so much information available. You got this wonderful platform where, you know, where BK gives you facts, resources. But see, back then, you know, you didn't have who had a who had a cell phone that they could Google some stuff. This is true. This These, is true. That man was a wolf. But everybody had a Bible, though. <laughs> he was, he was Everyone a had a Bible. He was even those little up, green, those green Gideon Bibles that they passed out for free. Everybody had at least one of those. He you was could a have straight up that. charlatan, you know. And again, I, I'm I'm not willing to go that. F- well, he definitely was a liar. He was a pariah. Nah, he was a pariah. He was a liar. <laughs> but I think he thought that by doing so, somehow, like the ends would justify the means. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's where he was going, you know. So, but he was wrong. He he was given wrong information, and he went about giving wrong information in the wrong way. And he should not be at at, at as we look back at his career, he should not be looked at as a master teacher. He was somebody who had good intentions, but did it in a very wrong fashion. And we need to put that away. You know, put that away because that that doesn't help us. And people need to see this because a lot of people get their information from, quote unquote, master teachers like Dr. Ben. That's what we're doing this series. It's like these OGs, these pillars, didn't, I hate to say it, didn't know what they were talking about. They were wrong. They were wrong. 
He might have been a good father, you know, good brother, you know. He probably did try to honestly help some people, but what he taught was more detrimental than beneficial. And that's just what just what it is. He he was misinformed and he did it in a in a in a fashion that lacked integrity. To to put it as as nice as I can. Oh, you just so nice. <laughs> Make look at stomach. look at MJ. MJ's chopping at the bit over here. It's making my stomach hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he's dead wrong. Like he, you know, he's wrong. He's wrong information, and he's and he did, he did it the wrong way. And Chris, it's, yes, he's yes. he's definitely he's definitely on the lineup. He is definitely it's, on the lineup. It's coming. So, but yeah, so we, you know. Just do do a quick um, synopsis of um, Mr. 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 Doctor Ben here, um, but yeah, guys, this is your king. Is this your king? This is the guy that you that you a lot of you guys swear by. I you know people take it as a badge of honor. I sat at the feet at Doctor Ben. <laughs> I, no, people have said that. I've been, I was in his classes. I sat in the feet. I hope you didn't pay. I'm sure many they many people did, because he taught he taught in legit he taught in legit boy, colleges. Boy, boy, boy. He was able to finagle his way into the university, mm, 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 mm. and he, that's why it's so hard for people like me and you and the rest of you away to refute, because he was legitimized by the universities. Well, it's it's just like I I said when we had Adam on the other day Monday. You know, affirmative action. He 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 was able to do what he did because of affirmative action. Right. Okay. Let's just keep it a buck. Right. And here's the thing: I don't have a problem with affirmative action. I think that if you qualified, you should be given a shot. You well, that's that's the key. Qualified. Qualified. You got to be qualified. Now, one one of the reasons why uh, you know they're going to say that we shouldn't have affirmative action. I'm pretty sh- I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring they're gonna f- go find if Mary I gotta see if Mary Lefkowitz is still alive, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna produce a lot of her literature because see charlatans like this hurt black people yeah. in terms of the structural gains that we have made. Mm. And this is absolute trash. Mm. This is trash because they about to they about to throw this crap in our face. No, and, and it will be a compelling case against affirmative action, unfortunately. You know, so so you're right, you know. So what he thought was going to help in the long run has hurt black people on multiple levels. Not just from, from the spiritual level, but from the gains that we want to make scholastically. That hurts us as, as well. So, yeah, it, it's, just, it's, just, it's just bad all the way around. It's just about all the way around. But we're going to leave it at that. Um, MJ, uh, final thoughts and anything that you are coming up with on your channel? <laughs> well, I'm going to be uploading some of these sessions on my channel that we did. You know, sure. I've already seen them. But me and Chris Bryan Samuel are going to be, uh, you know, doing the takedown of Ben Shapiro this Friday. Uh-oh. So it's gonna be fun. I've always wanted to interact with Ben Shapiro. Wow. So be on the lookout this Friday, Freestyle Friday, take down of Ben Shapiro. Sounds good. Sounds good. And yes, guys, look out, you know, for some other um individuals that will be on the chopping block during the Is That Your King series. So with that being said, MJ and BK signing off. Peace. <laughs>